Hello, I'm David Chaston with 90 at 9, brought to you by interest.co.nz. This is where you get everything you need to know in 90 seconds at 9 o'clock with news the IMF has again downgraded world growth prospects. But first, the latest regional Fed survey in the US, this time from the mid-Atlantic states, shows manufacturing activity weakened in July. Their index fell from plus 2 in June to minus 12 in July, its lowest reading since January 2013 as all three components, that's shipments, new orders and employment, posted declines. Backlogs of orders also fell, reaching a value of minus 26, its lowest reading since April 2009. US home sales fell in June, down 1.7% when a flat result was expected. A persistent shortage of properties pushed prices to a record high, however, with a median home price up to $425,800, or up 4.3% year on year. Their housing market is struggling to regain speed after hitting a soft patch last year. Meanwhile, the average commitment rate for a 30-year conventional fixed-rate mortgage in the US decreased to 3.80% in June, down from 4.07% in May. These rates are remarkably like the New Zealand ones. Meanwhile, the White House and Congress have completed their two-year debt ceiling deal. It's a rare consensus compromise in a, and a deal that helped firm the US currency. In China, yesterday we reported that their Nasdaq-style tech share index had launched on Monday with Beijing's SOE buying support. But yesterday that support wasn't extended, and first-day buyers lost more than a billion dollars as prices retraced sharply. It seems it was a one-day wonder. And yesterday, two more private Chinese firms joined the growing ranks of bond defaulters. Meanwhile, China is importing beef and pork at a fast-rising pace, replacing lost local production from the African swine flu epidemic in the pig herd. Imports of beef surged more than 60% so far this year to 1, 133,700 tonnes. Overseas pork purchases in June rose even more from a year earlier to 160,500 tonnes. The IMF has reduced its 2019 and 2020 growth forecasts yet again, saying that the downgraded outlook is self-inflicted by trade war policies. While this latest downgrade is a modest 0.1% in each of the two years reviewed, it comes on top of prior substantial downgrades. The longer the trade standoffs continue, the sharper these will become. No doubt a hard Brexit will be accounted for in the next review. U.S. Treasury 10-year yield has moved up to 2.07%. Gold is down $8 overnight to $1,419 an ounce. And U.S. oil prices are a little firmer again today. They're just over 56.50 a barrel, while the Brent benchmark is also firmer at just over 63.50 a barrel. And the Kiwi dollar is marginally softer today and just touching 67.1 U.S. cents, which is down more than half a cent since this time yesterday. On the cross rates, we're also softer at 95.7 Australian cents. Against the euro, we dipped to 60.1 euro cents. That puts the trade weighted index just on 72.1. I'm David Chaston. That was 90 at 9, brought to you by interest.co.nz.